Good afternoon and welcome to Microbers presentation uh, as a part of the NWR virtual conference. Microbers, a private company uh, that is Australian based working to create a community of greater health built on leading scientific research. Microbers established itself as a world leader in the analysis of the gut microbiome. The company's microbiome test kit provides detailed insights into the microorganisms in our bodies and how they function. It's a powerful evidence-based tool that allows people to learn about their un unique microbial community in unprecedented detail. It also allows people to improve their overall health and well-being through suggested dietary changes. Last month, the company announced a partnership with Boston-based Holobiome to examine the impact of specific gut bacteria in laboratory models of depression. From the company today, we have the founder and CEO, Blake Wills. Blake was at the helm of Microba when it was named Australian Emerging Company of the Year in the 2018 Oz Biotech Excellence Awards. Let's hear from him now. And as always, in terms of any questions that do come through, uh, please feel free uh, to hit up the Q and A box down the bottom, but I'll pass over to Blake uh, to kick through the presentation. Thank you, Simon. And uh, it's great to be here with all of you today and an opportunity certainly to present who Microba is what we've achieved to date and the direction that we're heading. So thank you, Simon and the team for the opportunity to present today. Presentation will be roughly 20 minutes and then we'll have some time for, for Q&A at the end. In terms of Microba, we are a gut health company. Uh, more specifically, we're a gut microbiome company. That is, we measure the community of organisms, bacteria specifically, that live in your large intestine. This community of bacteria has been implicated in a broad range of health and disease states. And Microba has world leading technology to measure this community of bacteria. That places us firmly in the digestive healthcare market. This segment is rapidly growing and we're at the forefront with some new technology capable of disrupting the entire segment. In the team, we have two co-founders who are very talented microbiologists, Professor Phil Hugenholtz and Professor Jean Tyson. And also involved, we have Professor Ian Fraser, who is our deputy chairman, chairs our medical advisory board and is a key advisor to the company. Ian invented Gardasil, which is a cervical cancer vaccine. Today, that's a Merck drug that sells around 3 billion per year, one of Australia's great success stories. So we've got a great scientific founding and we'll talk a little bit more about the history shortly. At Microba, our technology, which measures the gut microbiome, the community of bacteria in your gut, we're able to deploy it in such a, such a fashion that unlocks multiple revenue streams, not only here in Australia, but globally. Here in Australia, we've established ourselves as a market leader we offer gut microbiome testing. We have over 12,000 customers since launching only two and a half years ago. That's generated over $4.6 million of revenue in the first two years following launch. We also have two major international distribution partnerships. One in the United States where we've been in market since late 2019, but also a recently announced partnership with Europe's largest pathology provider, Synlab. We're very excited about this partnership and where that's going to go. The technology has also enabled us to build a world leading microbiome data set. So this is big de-identified data, which lets us look at specific signals between bacteria in the gut and disease states that we're interested in. And we're looking at novel bacteria to discover if they're therapeutically relevant to help us treat disease states such as inflammatory bowel disease. We'll touch on this in a little bit more detail shortly. Now to the team, I've touched on Professor Phil Hugenholtz and Professor Jean Tyson, our two co-founders who are in the top 1% of scientists globally. They've been leading the field of the microbiome and specifically measuring the microbiome using DNA sequencing technologies for the last 20 and 30 years, respectively. Also involved is our chairman, Dr. Uh, Mr. Paddy Rombola, who's ex-Deutsche Bank and Morgan Stanley. We have Dr. Hyung Tai Kim, who's ran businesses through uh, Asia and Europe. He represents a strategic investor of ours out of Korea, Macrogen. Also Dr. Caroline Popper, who's a US based pathologist who works with uh, John Hopkins over in the US. The team's a great mix of science and commercial skill sets, including myself. 
we have approximately 40 people in the team and we've got a great mix of people to commercialize this technology. A little bit on our history. So first of all, we started back in the mid nineties when one of our co-founders was using the old technology 16S rRNA sequencing to try and analyze microbial communities. In 2004, our other co-founder changed the game when he used a new technology known as shotgun metagenomics to do the first characterization of a microbial community. This was performed at UC Berkeley in California. Both Phil and Jean spent time at Berkeley and then at the Joint Genome Institute and MIT before returning to Australia in 2010, where they set up a research center dedicated to the microbiome. Over a seven year period between 2010 and 2017, they optimized the measurement technology that we have at Microba today. And then in October of 2017, we successfully spun out of the University of Queensland and we've been in the process of commercializing this new technology ever since. We launched our first product in July of 2018, some two and a half years ago now, and we've been very successful in helping people deeply understand the human gut microbiome, whether they be consumers, clinicians, or researchers. We've announced a couple of big partnership deals, and I'll touch on that a little bit more shortly. At Microba, our core hypothesis is that precise measurement of the human gut microbiome is required to advance healthcare. We've seen this community of bacteria in the gut are unequivocally important in influencing disease states. The microbiome acts systemically and it's been shown to be a critical factor in disease. So if that is true, what we need to be able to do is measure the community of bacteria accurately. And microbes develop technology that lets us do this, which means we're able to uncover what is happening in the gut in the context of disease. It's a very important scientific development. Why is the gut microbiome so important? Fundamentally, the most important relationship is between the gut bacteria, which we've co-evolved with over thousands of years, and the immune system. It's a very tight relationship and what we need is a state of immune homeostasis. And we've seen the development of a range of disease conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease get worse in Western societies as our lifestyles, diet, use of antibiotics has changed. At Microba, we're looking at this link between the bacteria and disease. And we're confident that the microbiome will unlock new diagnostic tools and is a source of novel therapeutic opportunities. What we've seen in the last 10 years is an enormous explosion in medical research looking at the gut microbiome. The reason for this is we now have the tools to accurately measure the microbiome and understand what role it is playing in disease. Previously, we didn't have this technology. DNA sequencing technologies that we use here at Microba have advanced significantly and that's why we've seen such an explosion of this field in recent years. Our competitive advantage at Microba is based around our ability to measure the microbiome more accurately. There's two key elements to this. It's our analysis technology, we call the Microba Community Profiler, and our genome database, which is the reference database that we map all of our data against to get the accurate results. And what we see is we see more of the microbiome we're more sensitive, we're more specific, meaning that we're more accurate. This means that we're not only identifying new bacteria with a great degree of accuracy, but we're also, we're also avoiding false bacteria. So we're not saying that something there is when it's not. This is a huge problem that is plaguing this field right now. And if we look at an example on the right-hand side there in inflammatory bowel disease, we can see two examples, one using a competitor technology and one using Microba's technology. On the left-hand side, it's using the same data using the competitor's technology to try and predict inflammatory bowel disease from the microbiome. They're only achieving an AUC of 0.68. Taking that exact same data and deploying Microba's technology, we're actually able to predict that disease condition with 0.86 accuracy with the exact same data. So this is a great example of why it's so important to measure the microbiome accurately and why Microba's competitive advantage is so important. We deploy this technology in two key ways at Microba. 
we have the ability to provide it as a service, which we let consumers, clinicians and researchers access this technology so they can measure the microbiome accurately. But secondly, we take big and de-identified data to look at specific disease states and the microbiome that is associated with that disease state. This creates a novel drug discovery opportunity. And at Microba, we've got some great early results and we're excited to be sharing those with you today. All in all, what we've achieved to date, we've launched a commercial product. We have over 12,000 customers. Last year, our revenue was $2.9 million in only our second year of operating. That was 60% growth on the prior year. So we're very pleased with the growth rate. We have major international partnerships, most notably one in the US and one in Europe, and we'll touch on the, those shortly. We have a world leading microbiome data set. This includes novel bacteria that microbe has discovered, and many of these are linked to disease, and we're in the process of discovering whether or not they can be used as new drugs. Our team is 40 people. We have 16 PhDs in the team, and we've been broadly recognized for all of our achievements to date. In terms of how the analysis works, here's a workflow that we have. First of all, it starts with a kit. So a, a customer, whether they be a consumer, clinician, or researcher, will order a kit. We're talking about the gut microbiome here. So we're talking about fecal matter. And what we're talking about doing is dabbing a piece of toilet paper to collect a small amount of fecal matter. You can see that in the second uh, step there. It's at home, it's very simple to use, and it's actually much better than a lot of the competitive technologies in that space. That sample then gets shipped back to our lab or one of our partner labs where it go, undergoes DNA sequencing. That data gets pushed to the cloud, which is really where Microbe's proprietary analytical tools kick in. We analyze millions of fragments of DNA from the bacteria, and then we put that picture back together to tell you exactly who is in your gut microbiome, what level of abundance they exist in your gut, what's the functional capability of the bacteria in the gut, and how you as an individual compare to a healthy person. That's what's really important here is we're trying to improve health by understanding the difference between disease and health and encouraging people on that journey back to a healthy spot. We also know what beneficial bacteria grow on. So we're able to make specific recommendations around diet to help people encourage the growth of beneficial bacteria that they as an individual are deficient in. This is all delivered back through an online interactive report, which is customized for the end user. How we are deploying this now at Microba is actually no longer as the retailer. We have our product here in Australia and we're supporting thousands of people understand the gut microbiome. But we've identified that we can actually become the wholesaler and enable partners globally with large networks of clinicians and consumers that use them, actually use our microbiome technology and offer a world leading test in their captive market. So just recently we've announced a partnership with Synlab Synlab is Europe's largest pathology provider. They have an enormous presence right across Europe and they identified Microba as someone they would like to partner with to offer their clinicians a solution to be able to accurately measure the human gut microbiome. We're very excited about this partnership that's just kicking off as we speak and we think that it's got a great future across Europe. I want to change gears a little bit now and talk about our human first discovery program. This is where we take big data and you can see that on the left we have thousands of de-identified customer samples. We've got very rich metadata around disease and diet, exercise, mental health and we're able to look very specifically at this data set and determine what a healthy microbiome looks like in contrast to a disease microbiome. And you'll see six plots there on the right hand side where we've got different species of bacteria. The green bar represents the presence of that bacteria in healthy people. And the black bar represents the presence of the bacteria in the disease state. In this case, we're looking at Crohn's disease, which is a type of inflammatory bowel disease. We're seeing clear differences in our data, even after taking into account confounding factors such as diet and lifestyle, use of medication, 
And what we're able to do then is study those bacteria to see if they've got an ability to confer a benefit to those with disease. And at the moment, we're seeing some really nice results with our first bacteria, some of these novel bacteria that have never been discovered before, suppressing inflammation. And inflammatory bowel disease is all about a state of the immune system being overactive. Therefore, we get inflammation in the gut. And what we're trying to do is find bacteria that actually keep that inflammation under control. So our first results in using this big data that we've accumulated are very promising. And the microbiome indeed does look like a promising source of new drug candidates. Why does all of this matter? Well, here we've got two great deal precedents and they're two deal precedents with big pharma. There's approximately 20 big pharma companies in the world. And two of them here on the screen, Genentech, Roche and Gilead have already done major transactions in our field. One between Genentech, Roche and Microbiotica, which was a 534 million US dollar deal. And the second between Gilead and Second Genome, which had a total potential deal value of $1.5 billion. Both of these companies, our competitors, which are well known to us, and we believe that we've got a nice competitive advantage over these other companies looking at the microbiome. What we're seeing is they're trying to use the microbiome as a source of drug discovery. We've spoken with both of these pharma companies and we do believe that we can add enormous value over and above what is already being done in this field. And a lot of it comes down to our ability to precisely measure the microbiome use big data and find the right bacteria that are actually going to make a difference. Another area that we're very excited about is predicting response to treatment. So the microbiome is implicated in whether or not you'll respond to various types of drugs. One of the most interesting types of drugs that we're looking at is cancer therapy. This is a class of drugs called immune checkpoint inhibitors. And in particular, we're interested in the drug class PD-1 and PD-L1s. These drugs are very exciting. They're relatively new. They work, and when they work, they work very well. The problem is they only work in a small percentage of patients. So between 15 and 20% for most indications. Now, what we're able to do and what we've proven is that with the microbiome, we can predict whether or not you're going to respond to an immune checkpoint inhibitor. This is early data that we've generated and we're excited to be generating more data over the coming 12 months to confirm we're able to do this. If we get it right, the benefits are enormous for patients who get the right drug, for pharma companies to understand why their drug is working in that patient. And finally, for payers, these drugs are very expensive, often costing around $100,000 per year. We believe that there's three key biomarkers in, in terms of whether or not someone will respond to these cancer therapy drugs. And we think the microbiome is the third one. So there's an enormous amount of work going on in this field right now. And we're very excited to be at the forefront of that. Our early data, as I mentioned before, which is only a sample size of 80 patients shows that we can predict response with an area under the curve of 0.89. This means that we're performing very well and we think there's real promise for the microbiome in predicting whether or not someone will respond to therapy. In summary, at Microba, we have some great activities going on. First and foremost, we have strong revenue growth from our services business. Last year, we saw growth of 60%. This year, we've executed some exciting partnerships and we're moving into Europe. We're already in the US and we think that we've got a great platform for growth in the coming years. With respect to our drug discovery program, using the human first big data approach I described, we think that pharma companies are gonna be very excited about partnering with us. And certainly we've had a number of conversations to confirm that hypothesis. The predictive cancer diagnostic program is a very exciting program, not only because it's an important human health problem that we at Microba are excited to be a part of solving, but we think financially it makes a lot of sense to get the right drug to the right person. The drug discovery program, we have novel leads coming through. We've got five inflammatory bowel disease candidates that are progressing through a range of preclinical experiments as we speak. And that's really proving that we can take big data to create new drug candidates. And we've seen major deal precedent in this space. The likes of Genentech, Roche and Gilead have already shown their willingness to interact in this space. 
but there's plenty of other companies that we think will be excited about what Microba is doing. Financially at Microba, I mentioned our strong revenue growth into the second year. We expect revenues to continue growing. We have a strong balance sheet. Our cash burn is about 700K a month as we're investing in this global growth and also proving that we can discover drugs from the microbiome. We're very fortunate to have great institutional backing and we're also a beneficiary of the R&D tax program, as you would imagine. Uh, Simon did preface this as to the fact that we're still a private company and remain a private company. Uh, we are exploring an IPO next calendar year and uh, certainly would encourage you to continue to watch this space. That's all I had to share with you today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the presentation and I look forward to your questions. All right, thanks, Blake. Uh, it was a very comprehensive uh, and slick presentation. Just a reminder to those that did want to ask a question, do so via via the Q&A box down at the bottom. Uh, first question is just regarding uh, the funding history of the company. Uh, you talked about being well funded. Uh, do you, did you want to just run us through um, whether Series A, Series B, or what level you're at at the moment? Certainly, yeah, thank you, thank you for the question. So uh, when we spun out of the University of Queensland, we did a Series A, that was back in early 2018. We raised $7 million. I was followed by a Series B in mid-2019 where we raised 12. And we've just, in fact, completed a pre-IPO where we raised 8.5 at a post-money valuation just north of $50 million. So the company has been very well supported by investors. We're excited to uh, continue our journey of growth. And I think our investors can certainly see where this company is heading and the opportunity it has on the global stage. Thanks, Blake. Uh, what's what's the margin on the tests? And after the test, does Microbe provide advice on taking certain food, drugs, supplements, etc.? Certainly. Uh, so the good thing about our testing technology is that the major input cost is actually DNA sequencing, and we're seeing the cost of DNA sequencing come down rapidly through time. There's some global companies like Illumina that have enormous amount of market share. We have a great relationship with Illumina, in fact. And we're seeing the cost of goods come down significantly. So the margin at the moment sits a little bit north of 50%. And we're at the moment looking at whether or not we maintain that margin or actually drop the price to increase our market penetration a little bit. So the margin is healthy and, and we think that it's, uh, it's at the right level. In terms of um, do we make recommendations or do we partner you know, with respect to supplements, Microba believes that we need to disrupt the probiotic market and that we've got the great technology to do that. Ultimately, a probiotic is about getting a bacteria into the large intestine. The challenge that is there right now is we don't know what that individual's deficiencies are. So at Microba, we can actually analyze the gut and look at what probiotics are gonna be much more suitable for you. So currently we're not engaged in, in making recommendations, but we are excited as the science is now starting to unlock some of those answers and we're making some great headway in the space. All right, next question. Are you doing any work with people that have evolved FODMAP? So some of our researchers here at Microbus, I mentioned we're a team of 40. Um, we, we have got a good relationship with the folks at Monash who have done a lot of the FODMAP work. A lot of our clients um, actually do suffer from digestive health issues. And clearly with IBS, the FODMAP is the go-to strategy. So yes, we do work there. Uh, it's still an, an emerging area of research, but it's something that we are absolutely involved in. And just in terms of the local GP community, how much awareness is there uh, around microbe and its, and its offerings? I, I think it's growing, Simon. The, the tradition, so we work with gastroenterologists, we work with GPs, we work with dietitians, nutritionists and, and naturopaths. And what we always see is that the allied health or the integrative health segment adopts technologies first. And one of the reasons is they've always focused on gut health and we're now bringing the science and the technology to be the yardstick as to where their patient is and what impacts the uh, interventions are actually having. With respect to the GP community, particularly the integrative GPs, and this is a big trend in America where we're seeing functional medicine really take hold and, and learn more about the patient and spend more time. 
that class of GPs is really starting to get a, a hold of this technology and understand the value it adds. I would make the comment though that your traditional GP that's sort of you're in for five minutes, you're out the door, you've got a cold or a flu, it's probably not the right fit for that type of GP because this is all about getting a deep understanding of the patient and looking at uh, lifestyle, diet, probiotic, prebiotic type interventions. Great. And just in terms of the, the product pipeline over the next you know, 12 to 24 months, can you run us through uh, what you'd like to see come out of that? Yes, yeah, certainly. So we have uh, already four tests in market. So we've got a couple of products here in Australia. We have a product in the US and we've just launched a product in Europe. So they all obviously deploy the underlying technology, which is measuring the human gut microbiome accurately. In addition, we've got a very interesting product that we're developing in conjunction with Dr. Paul Griffin, who's the head of infectious diseases at the Mater Hospital. And that's what we call a hypothesis-free infectious disease test. Um, that's got a huge amount of application and potentially replacing PCR and culture testing, or at the very least complementing that technology, which is broadly used in hospitals at the moment. And of course, in terms of the product pipeline, we have new diagnostic programs and also new therapeutic programs underway. So it's a, it's a full product pipeline. And I think that we're going to be excited about all of those coming to market. Awesome, that uh, concludes the Q&A section. Blake, did you want to just uh, maybe provide a bit of a wrap up uh, and we'll finish up there and that'd be great. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Well, I don't have too much more to add. Uh, my contact details are on the screen. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I just thank you again to Simon and the NWR team for hosting us here today. Appreciate right. it. Thanks so much, Blake, and thanks to all for joining.